Well, it looks like the Astra Saga is coming to a close now. Um, someone came to see the car yesterday. Uh, the RPM issue is fixed. I've just I've been starting it and driving it around a little bit after he left just to make sure everything's still good. And uh, I mean, I've I've verified it again and again, so I'm really confident that that this is it. That the car is is good. I'm happy to sell it in good conscience as well. I'd, hate to sell it and then it come back a week later and get angry phone calls uh, you don't need that in your life don't hide anything that's wrong with the car it's better that you just tell people and you'll be surprised people some people will just buy it anyway and they're not fussed as long as it looks tidy they don't care if it's got foibles they just say oh it's an old car you know 2007 um so we'll wait for the guy to come he did offer me a deposit i said don't worry about it he's going to come back today with the cash so he's been drawing it out over the period of a couple of days so hopefully in a few hours this car will be gone but until the money's in my hand and the v5's been changed over uh i'm not going to get my hopes up but in the meantime i just thought while i've still got the car i'll show you exactly what we've done on it how much it cost and how much you can expect to pay if you're doing it so the reason i got this car in the first place is uh, because of this EGR hard pipe down here. When I had to take the EGR off for another job when it was still owned by one of my customers, these two bolts just snapped off. There's nothing I could do about it. Uh, couldn't find a manifold for it anywhere. The manifold that I did find, which came, came for the right engine code, but there's obviously some slight variations and it just wouldn't bolt upright. Uh, so I had to drill out the old manifold and the bill was quite big it took six hours to drill them out that's why i was going to buy a new manifold because it always takes forever and then i had to heli coil them uh, to get this to bolt back up you can see they look quite rusty now those bolts it's how long i've had the car because of the coronavirus i haven't been able to sell it um so essentially rather than pay the bill he offered me the car instead and he said he might just go and buy a van because he was intending to do that at some point anyway so I said, yeah, no problem, I'll, I'll take it. So before I did any work on this car, just from that bill that I didn't get paid for, I'm already into the car for some money. So I'll walk you through how much I've spent on this car in order to get it to the point where I can sell it. So these are all trade prices. Um, I bought, this is only one part of the exhaust manifold. I bought there's the other part down there I didn't realize it was a two-part manifold when I ordered it so I had to go back and grab another one so I've changed the oil in it I changed the map sensor the map sensor readings weren't quite right and it was filled up with gunk uh, the exhaust gasket these are exhaust gaskets for the uh, downpipe and one for the EGR valve I just decided to get new ones for that you can reuse them they are metal gaskets it just I just prefer to use new ones uh, I had to renew the thermostat. The thermostat was not opening properly. It was opening, but not properly. And he was complaining when he owned it about bad fuel economy. So that that can explain that. Uh, and the f sorry, and the fuel economy has been much better since I've replaced it as well. So I'm, well, I suppose and the map sensor does make a difference. There, there's just an accumulation of things, I guess. You know, when when there are so many things that aren't working quite right, it's hard to pinpoint exactly which one it is. Uh, just illustrates where you need to fix all of them. One of the upper intercooler uh, hoses was split, replaced that. Manifold gasket, that is the other side of the uh, exhaust manifold. And all of that came to 151. With this, is about 160. I wrote it down, I think. It's 160 odd. And then we're into it for about 500 pound labour. So we, never, we didn't have to buy the car, but we've already put 660 pound into it. Um, so we, that's, that would be the bare minimum that we would need to get for this car just to cover our labour and the parts. But things that that doesn't cover, it doesn't cover um, people coming to look at the car, your time putting the advert up, the thousand times you have to wash it. As you can see on the bonnet, see all the stuff that just lands from all the trees. Every time someone comes to see it, you have to wash it. It's got to look nice or people won't buy it. So there's an awful lot of work that... Um, that's involved in just getting a car ready to sell. One of these um, uh, wing mirrors was missing its cap, so I had to buy one of those as well and fit that. So there's a whole host of things that you need to do to make a car attractive for somebody to buy it. 
Uh, but when all is said and done, this car turned out to be a pretty good gamble. It, I thought it had a turbo problem, um, but it turns out that the there's a little nut on the turbo actuator just needed a very slight adjustment and um, the car's been running sweet as a nut ever since because uh, I went through the whole system checked everything and everything was working as it should actuated everything that could be actuated and it was all working fine uh, so eventually I just decided that you know obviously the turbo just needs a little bit of adjustment and I tried it because I thought maybe I just need a new turbo so I tried it and that worked I've taken some footage of this car um, you know, in its various stages of being fixed and what have you, and uh, I'll try and I'll try and put some of the more interesting pieces at the end of of this video. And there it goes, one sold car, and a very stormy day. Okay, so I can try and show this. The engine is hot, which makes it e extra difficult. I've got the spanner the wrong way around as well, which doesn't help. So with a 10 mil, like so, you want to. I prefer the flared end. You could use just a normal stubby spanner. You need to break loose this nut here, and then there is a little geared wheel just in front of it here, where my spanner is now. And you need to turn it this way. So you need to turn it that way as the way I'm moving the spanner. So you need to get a screwdriver on there and turn it like that to get the adjustment right. And I would go a very few turns. So just turn it once or twice. Start the car. Um, take it on a little, take it on a little drive. Once you've snugged this up, you can never ever drive this with the bolt undone. So you always need to snug that back up and then test the, the boost level again. So I did mine about one turn and a half um, full rotations and mine was okay after that. So what I want to do is just snug up this nut here. Can be a little bit difficult to break loose but it shouldn't be, shouldn't be the end of the world. Although you may do that a couple of times. <laughs> one second. 